What's up? It's Jarrell Seeker here, and uh, this is going to be an update from the Star Seek Collective. I've been talking to lots of people in the stars. We've been doing many different things. Uh, everyone is going through a lot of different transitions, uh, including myself. And um, one of the biggest, I guess, messages or themes of this time right now is managing attachment. And um, I'm just going to share some of the lessons that I've learned, um, lessons that I feel need to be shared and uh, as much, I guess, experience that I can pour in that I've experienced. <laughs> um, so with attachment, uh, for me personally, I've learned that I'm only responsible for myself and my own well-being uh, and everyone else, like though I care and I can love them deeply, like I, I can't be attached to what they do or how they are. Um, though we always want the best for the people that we love um, and the people that we spend time with, uh, ultimately it's their lives to live. Um, and um, when you talk to others and they share about their lives and their life decisions with you, um, as a good friend um, or someone with a healthy attachment in any format, honestly, just leave them with assurance that, um, I mean, if you see anything that you don't agree with, I mean, say something, but you can't be attached to what they'll do with that information because everyone's on their path and um, your part is to just say what you see um, and, and leave it at that. Um, one of the philosophies that have helped me so much uh, during my growth as a way shower is that, um, when I meet people, they're just different mirrors. There's many, many different mirrors of myself, uh, aspects of myself coming to be reconciled. And so I see the God in them and I try to reflect that which I see and um and 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 just tell them that, you know, like, you know, I, I would love to hear. Like I, I guess I just ask them what their feelings are about the things that they're telling me. Because I could tell them what I would do, but they're not me. And so that's not really good or effective uh, advice. And then on top of that, uh, I could be attached to what they would do other than what I would have done because, I don't know, ego is weird and it can happen that way. So by just <laughs> by just reflecting, like being an a, a, a object, not an object, that's, that's terrible, <laughs> a person of reflection by putting my own face aside and letting them look into uh themselves a little bit i could um, provide them my friends and the people that i care about with like a moment of self-reflection by just sharing together and um if they need my personal opinion about things i'm sure they'll ask uh, i give them to it too but um the biggest thing is like you can't get attached to, to people no matter who they are um because they all have to make their own decisions uh kids are a little different i mean you have you have Full responsibility for them when they're young and then after that they make their own decisions letting go after a certain time is also very important you don't want to be that person that is uh, too attached to their child and they can't develop because you're hovering over them <clears throat> one of the things that i learned is that the fear of others choices that come from unhealthy attachment can be used as a mechanism of control so sometimes we have people that we have unhealthy attachments to um, and this could happen because you've maybe met them at like a vulnerable state in your life. Maybe you knew them when you were younger. And so like the relationship was kind of like kind of always unbalanced, but you didn't really understand the give and take at the time. Um, it's like a relationship that needs to grow into a more balanced state. Um, we, me, not we, I'm going to try to use me because <laughs> I wanted to be personal. Um, I know that I, I can get, are scared of other people's choices uh, when I want to reveal how I feel and see things. Even if I understand the way that I see and feel things may be wrong or not even wrong. It's not wrong. Um, inaccurate to their perception of reality. Um, I still feel scared sometimes when I share how I feel because I've been met with a lot of backlash in my past about my feelings of certain situations. 
And if I'm scared to tell the people that I care about when I notice something, then, uh, or I don't like their behavior or the way that our relationship is, um, that fear can be used against me as a mechanism of control. And that's not useful. So um, being able to recognize that um, by being as authentic to yourself as possible. And I'm saying, you know, I'm not saying be an asshole. I'm saying, you know, speak, speak clearly, like speak what you mean um, and without fear. And I feel like people will hear you and understand you better um, than if you're speaking from a place of fear, um, because then you're, you're speaking like that fear is going to control your words. And then the way that they receive you will be different because you're speaking from fear and not uh, authenticity. And even when you say something that you feel like is scary, but when you say it in authenticity, like when you're doing it from your authentic self, it's a lot, it's easier to digest that information because it's the closest thing, the truth that you can offer that person. And so that has a high level of resonance. And so the, the odds are, that even though your words may be hard to take and it's hard to say, um, it's going to change them no matter what. Like your words have the power to change people. And so even though like sometimes we say things that, I mean, especially as empaths, as, 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 as someone who is gifted in, in this, in the way of feeling uh, with others is you have to um, be brave in that, like, it's important. Like, you're, it's important to state the things that make you feel uncomfortable. It's okay to state your fears. Um, and especially as an empath, when you have uh, fears, it could affect your senses. Um, you could be projecting your fears onto others. Um, and seeing like more into things that aren't even there. And that's another reason why it's important to uh to share your fears with your friends and the people that you are trusted with um because when you do that you break the chains of that fear and it can no longer control you especially because your friends got your back and if they notice that that's happening um you can trust hopefully you can trust you know you you build that development or that relationship with them that you can offer that trust to uh you know remind you gently uh when you are straying into that area so that you can correct yourself because you guys are both in an agreement that um certain levels of uh or certain situations can trigger a fear reaction and so it's just kind of like being mindful of each other sharing the, that that vulnerable uh state of being with each other and then if they truly care about you um they should respect that that vulnerability if they don't respect that vulnerability then you understand that though that person is not a good person to have in your inner circle um it's scary to be vulnerable um but when you practice being vulnerable and when people don't respect that vulnerability um that vulnerable state of yours gets stronger and so like to like in the beginning it feels like you're like not wearing any armor at all and then after a while, you start getting tough skin and, and then you start getting less and less attached to how people perceive your state of authenticity and um, whether they can receive that or not is their prerogative. Um, if they didn't want your opinion, then they shouldn't have asked. <laughs> I definitely am, am a big believer of like not like always asking permission when you're talking to someone or when they're sharing something with you and you feel like you have something you can add or you have advice or experience that you'd like to share with them, it's always important, for me at least, that I ask people, hey, are you open to advice? Are you open, you know, are you open to 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 hearing some of my experience? And I feel like when they verbally say yes, like it's a lot easier for them to hear you because they've already agreed to hearing you. And if they're not respecting that, then you can say, hey, like, I mean, you did agree to hear me. And if you don't like what I said, I mean, you did agree to listening at least. So, um, and I'm not saying this out of, uh, I'm I'm trying to say this out of uh, respect and uh, share what I see instead of using it. This is not a tool of, um, it's not a tool for, for getting a one-up. 
or anything like that. So, or, or trying to put somebody down. That's a, that's a good way. I don't know if that, that was very complicated, but in my head, it made sense. So I'll leave that. Um, letting, uh, choosing to let go. Oh, controllers in life. Uh, are those that you have a dependency on or an unhealthy attachment to an old state of being. So when you start to change your attachment styles, um, the people that you had attachments with will shift. Like they're, they're going to notice the difference in your energy and what you're willing to offer. And that shift sometimes is met well. Like, like okay, cool. Like, that's fine. Like, it's understanding. Like, okay, you're a different person. That's fine like or the relationship that we have the energy exchange is different now that's fine like some people are okay with that um and those are usually good people um you know but there are also people who are very against that you'll you'll meet a lot of resistance when you try to change your relationships and how much your attachment is in those relationships if they're met if your um detachment maybe not even full detachment just like your want to uh, claim space or a boundary around the access to your emotions if that causes someone to lash out at you or um react nastily like i can understand if you can can be in a, in a place of vulnerability um and they can share with you about that if they're bad communicators sometimes it can come off very defensive and you can talk to them about that but if they come off very negatively as if they are entitled to your energy on um, that person has had a dependent relationship with you during the time where you had an unhealthy attachment style. And if it's met with aggression in any format, um, boundaries need to be raised and you have to, um, for me, at least I, I separate myself from that person. Like I would never try to make sure that people, I'm not dependent on anybody um, because I don't want anyone to be attached to me in the sense that like I have to change my life for someone. Um, that's not my jam. But um, it's important that when you claim your power, this is just advice for anyone listening, any empaths um, changing their attachment styles, any of the Star Sea fam listening to this that are trying to adjust their attachment styles. Um, just know that when you do decide to chat, uh, detach or change that relationship you'll be met with resistance and the elements within that resistance are places where changes need to be made. And so journaling during that time, um, you can write down who are the people that respond to that, that energy shift and how do they respond? And is that a positive thing or are they speak like, are they like, like talking or acting out of fear uh, or insecurity? And is that person a benefit to your life? Like look at the pros and cons of just being around that person. And if there's not more pros than cons, that means that they're taking more than they're giving. And that means that your relationship either needs to change with them or, um, uh, I mean, you, you, yeah, your relationship needs to change with them, or at least you need to accept that, like you have an unhealthy attachment style, like you're, you're giving more than you're getting with this person. If you're okay with that, then by all means, that's you. Um, me, I'm not really that okay with that. So <laughs> I understand when people need to be takers for a season, um, people go through all types of stuff and you can't always, uh, expect equivalent exchange at all times with people, uh, with friends, um, especially when, when you're close, you know, when you have things that are going on, but I'm talking about people who like, like, they just don't like, don't pour into someone who's not pouring back into you. And, um, if you can really ingrain that into your understanding when you have relationships, like listen to how much words are exchanged when you talk. Like, do you realize if you're talking more than you're listening or listening more than you're talking? And if there's not, if it's going in both, like in either direction, if you're talking too much and they're just listening and they're not talking about anything that you're talking about, they may not all be there or they're not, or they, they could just be like entertaining you instead of actually being there for you and then other way around if you um if you're doing a lot more listening and they're not letting you talk at all then they're just pouring into you they're pouring their self their problems into you they're low unloading onto you and if you're not okay with that if you are in a place where um that can bring you down then 
um, that relationship has to change. Yeah, or it, I mean, you can raise that concern because um, it, it's supposed to go both ways. You're supposed to pour into each other. You know, when I have problems, I lean on my friends. When they have problems, they lean on me. And we pour into each other. We give each other energy that way. We change. We 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 um exchange information like, hey, this is what I'm going through. How did you solve that? Did you have a problem like that in your life? And then if you did, how did you solve it? And when you build your friends in a network like that, um, you all become better. And that's that's a big core of the Star Seed Collective. Uh, for those of you who are in it, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate all you. Um, they, I mean, you guys all keep me sane and. <laughs> Um, vice versa, I, I know that we have all been a big impact on each other's lives, and I've seen and watched so many of my uh, friends, my star fam, uh, glow up and, and shine in so many different ways, and when I see my friends win, I win, and when I win, they all win, so it feels great, um, but I, I digress back into attachment styles. Uh, fixing these relationships will call uh for for you to put yourself first and um and vulnerability you have to be in a vulnerable spot to talk honestly about your feelings even if it upsets the people around you um you can admit that your feelings aren't everyone's reality um but hearing your perspective um is important because you're a person and you deserve to explain or exist <laughs> and and share your experience of the world um but that doesn't mean that they have to accept everything that you say as as truth but you have to, they have to at least admit that you're experiencing something. And um, and respecting that is important to the human experience because we all are uh, experiencing something on different levels. And um, sometimes it's really hard to be in someone else's shoes if you you don't even understand the things that they've gone through. And um, I know that right now there's a lot of people that have gone through a lot of different types of uh, traumas. And so they have very complex ways that they interpret the world around them. And I guess the, the easiest way to navigate that type of scenario where the people around you may have different belief structures than yourself and can be sensitive in places where you may not be familiar and their ability to communicate may not be as high as yours. So um, the best way to kind of get around that is to ask a lot of questions carefully <laughs> about how they feel about certain things because you you can't tell how anyone else is feeling. You can't guess how anyone's feeling. You can only ask. And if they don't tell you a lot, I mean, that's fine. They don't want to share. But if they do tell you, listen. And even if it's not the same reaction you would have, you would I need to understand that like that's the world that they're living in. And whether... Um, you can understand that or, or those, uh, you, if you can, whether you can, uh, can empathize with those feelings or not, um, it just has to be respected that they're, they're still going through a process of self-learning like we all are. And sometimes it can be confusing and hard and scary, um, to voice our fears. So it, it helps when you're able to, uh, to ask questions, be prompted sometimes. And it helps you let that down your guard and open up your heart. And then when you can link with someone on the heart level, it's kind of nice. Because, I mean, it's just like, okay, you know where my weaknesses are. And I agreed to not go there. And you know where, you know, and vice versa. And um, and even, well, like, once you get to know people, I mean, even, you can even, like, like, help them define that boundary even more. In the sense that, like, you know, say I'm really sensitive about um my time in the service and um i don't want to talk about it but maybe later as our friendship develops as our relationship changes uh, i would be open to talking about it and sharing about it uh, because we built that trust and so i'm allowing you to get closer to a place that there was a wound before and when we allow people to get close to a wound you're allowing them to heal it um because it's only a wound when you can't let anyone touch it, you know, when it bleeds, when it gets touched, um, it's only broken if it's, if it hurts, <laughs> you know what I mean? So when you let someone examine that fear, that wound, um, in a sense, by letting them touch it, it, it does heal, um, because it's getting less and less sensitive and you're, you're coming to the realization that you're, you're in the now and not the then, and that, 
the event of the past happened, yes, and it did hurt, yes, and they're validating your experience, yes, because you can share it with the person that's touching that wound. As they're touching that wound, you can be like, hey, like, even though we're having this conversation, like, I'm still really nervous, like, about my time in the service or something like that. And that's that's the process of alchemizing um, wounds, like relationship wounds, attachment wounds. Um, and it takes it takes vulnerability. It takes someone that you can trust. And it takes a lot of patience um, and time and listening. I know not everyone has time like that, but it's important to make time for the people that you care about. I feel like sometimes we get so busy that we don't make time for that conversation. And years can go by and you, you only know someone at a surface level. And that's it's too bad because we're only around for so long. You know, We only walk parallel paths for so long. It's important to to really uh, try to connect with someone on a, on a deep level when you get the chance to, because like, isn't that the point of living? Like, <laughs> I mean, it is to me. Uh, I mean, we can't hold on to money or things or experiences. We, we can even forget experiences, but when, when you connect hearts with someone, like, you know, you live in their heart too. Like you, you, you made a difference. And so like, even if you were to forget that moment, um, they're not going to forget you and vice versa. Um, sometimes when your heart is moved by someone, they make a big impact on your life and they may not even know how they did it, um, but they did. And it, it alters your course forever in a sense, like they, um, they moved you, they moved you on a heart level and to be moved that way is also a, a feat of vulnerability. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, all right. I have like two more like little lines and then we'll wrap it up. Um, Accepting the darkness in within inside of oneself and others, uh, choosing to be your best self when it counts is uh, cause not everyone uh needs your one hundred percent all the time. So this is this is something that like I had to really kind of grapple with. Um, I had a very strong Christian background myself, and um, when I went to the service, uh, I did things that I wasn't proud of as a Christian, and it helped me. Oh, I had to. Um, I wound up having a big falling out with Christianity and I needed to go explore other forms of spirituality so that I can come back to God in, in a way that is more personal instead of uh, attached to a church or to the opinion of other people. And um, with that journey came me facing a lot of the darknesses that were in me um, since my childhood. And when you do that, um, you're making a deeper peace with yourself and, and recognizing like where where your darknesses are. And when you can do that, you can choose to change. Um, and there are some things that are really hard to change, um, but, but recognizing it and calling it out and then choosing to act upon it um, is, is a feat that many people never take. You know, they always, they miss it because um, it does take time to self-reflect on what, my, what your darknesses are. That's why we have friends. They help. They help that process, but if you don't, the individuation process can also be a, a one-player game, and it takes like sitting down with a good notebook or um, some type of recorder, some some way to self-reflect on um, a situation like this is great. Um, but yeah, the accepting that darkness and then being good with it, like understanding that by recognizing it and then recognizing it as uh, darkness, you can step past it in the sense that you understand like because you can recognize it you're not going to do it again like i mean you at least shouldn't <laughs> like if you want to grow past the thing you don't do it again so by recognizing the darkness in the past you'll recognize it again if it shows up in the future and you can choose to do something differently because you've recognized the darkness of your past and you accepted that you have grown past who you were back then and by choosing to do it differently when it comes back to you um, that's you breaking uh that that pattern of behavior. That's that's really cool. Um, not everyone deserves a hundred percent of you all the time. Um, some people, especially like say you have a job, you have like a nine to five. Not everyone deserves your hundred percent. Okay. Um, you can give it. Is you I mean you can give as much as you can give, but um, save your hundred percent for the people that are most most valuable to you it's like uh like you only have so much water in your in your cup you know what i mean and um 
I mean, random people deserve kindness as much as you have, you know, sure. Um, but you got to keep that cup full for the people that are in your most immediate life and yourself because you need to drink. Um, so, yeah, not everyone. And also, like, if you are, are coming up to somebody and you have uh, if they're if they're talking to you about you, uh, talking to you about complex things or their feelings or whatever, sometimes a lot of people just need to listen. Like they just need to be listened to, and so you don't have to give them much of anything besides an ear and 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 a and a thank you, and uh, maybe a how you feeling, and that's that's usually enough. Um, if I were to go and tell someone everything that I see wrong in their life and how to fix it. Um, they probably get really uncomfortable around me. I wouldn't be uncomfortable around me, <laughs> and it might not even be right. Like that's the thing; it might even be bad advice because I'm not them. Uh, even if I can say I can see something, um, they're still not the same person as me. So who knows what, uh, what kind of advice they truly need? Uh, but no matter what, everyone can be listened to, and that's that's better than talking at somebody. Like people need less talking, more ears. Uh, more questions. Uh, all right, last one is be an observer of the change that you have on uh, the people that you talk to. So uh, when you when you speak to people, when we have a conversation, like right now, I'm I'm speaking to you. Uh, you can't really speak back, so it's kind of a one-way situation, but I'm going to have an effect on you in some format. Whether you're listening to my words or not, just having the video on changes something. That impact, I hope, Pray to God that you can walk away with some really positive things that can equip you to confront your life with more confidence and uh, a perspective focused on taking care of yourself first and healthy attachment styles. That's my that's my goal. When when we talk with people in in person or even online, uh, our words have a lot of gravity to them whether we know it or not like later people think about the things we say um and if they don't think about the things you say it's in them like it still carries that energy is still in them so if you go around and you're a negative individual or not very supportive put people down uh, when they try to change uh, it becomes really hard for that person to do it because you're not a pillar of resilience for that person at that point you're you're, you're acting as resistance in their life so as agents of change, as a way shower, as as being part of the Star Sea Collective, um, my prerogative is to make your life, my life. I want to be in the least amount of resistance as possible with anyone that I approach that asks me for help. I want to put them in a place of ease because there's enough, there's enough resistance out there, like honestly, and sometimes people just need a place of ease. I'm not saying that you need to uh, blow hot smoke up their ass and say everything's okay. Um, but you can definitely reassure them that everything is okay um, and that they are going through a process and that um, it may be hard right now, but it won't be hard forever. And like stuff like that, like actual encouragement can really help people get through the hardest of times. Um, the, just the act of encouragement is something that I didn't realize is a superpower. That's straight out of Dungeons and Dragons. You're being a bard. You're giving people inspiration. You giving them a, a deep confidence because you know that at least one person believes in you. And that can change everything about how you approach things and um the level of confidence you have when you approach them. Sometimes we have a hard time believing in ourselves. So if you have friends that believe in you and they tell you that they believe in you, just at least believe your friends. And that's, you can say that your friends believe that you can be the version of you that your friends see instead of the version of you that you believe that you are. And that really helps me. Um, That helps me see past who I used to be in the past and accept the growth and the healthy attachments and relationships that I've forged uh, today. And um, by accepting my friends pretty much I accept myself by accepting like their 
um, the relationships that we have and the healthy boundaries that we hold, I get to enjoy a level of peace and camaraderie that um, I haven't gotten to experience too much of until um, until I created this thing <laughs> and, and we all found each other. So I just want to let everyone know, um, thank you so much for all the lessons. You guys are all my teachers. You're all my best friends. You're all the bomb. And um, I'm happy that we can be connected and also be so far away. And I hope that my voice reaches you. I hope that we take something great out there. And, um, you know, I hope that you find your star family, whoever you are out there, um, and, and realize that they're always looking. You know, the people that you're looking for are also looking for you. So feed, feed the things that feed you. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Peace.